Hello, uh, in the lesson number five, we're going to be looking uh, more closely into the text blocks and uh, how we can uh, process and analyze text, uh, which is a uh, very often and very important uh, part in our coding because uh, many times we'll be dealing with uh, uh, long uh, strings, long uh, chunks of text that uh, may contain all sorts of information that is essentially patched together and we need to somehow be able to decipher it and uh, separate, split and uh, essentially dig out the information that we need from there. Um, as you can see uh, the designer space is already ready for us uh, since we know how to do this we don't want to spend too much time here we need the button here because we need the action to activate our code to uh, begin execution of our code. Uh, since we deal with the text, uh, we introduce the text box here where we're going to essentially in our app enter the text that we want to analyze. And uh, here's the label that is a display or whatever processing we do with this text is going to be displayed right here. Uh, through this label. So, without much more explanation, let's move on to the blocks and uh, see what do we have under the text blocks, right? But first, we know that we're going to need this text button to execute our code, so let's go to our event handler, which is right at the top. It's when the text button is clicked, right? We're going to be executing something. So, let's see. What do we want to do? We want to set this uh, label to display the result of our processing of this text that we're going to enter here. So uh, we're going to need the text label blocks and we want to set the text label text to something that's going to be our result. So as we said before, we can pick any set text label, simply change here from the drop down to text and then this is going to be some uh, result of our processing of the text but before we can process our text we need to have some text here right so we're going to type in here let's say MIT app inventor oops inventor 2 uh, as our text that we want to process. It's a good example. We have capital letters, we have spaces, we have uh, small letters, right? We have even a number. So it's a good mix of characters that we have in this text. So let's see what we can uh, do with it, right? So let's go to the text drawer here. And uh, we have quite a few options. We won't necessarily execute uh, each of these, but we'll focus on the ones that are uh, more interesting to us. We've seen this one before. It's a, it's a constant, text constant. We'll be using it here. Uh, we've seen this one when we want to add two texts together. We use this join block. Uh, this one is uh, simple, but it's uh, very often used. Uh, very often we want to see what is the length uh, of our uh, text uh, total string of, of characters, right, that we have in the text. And, and by the way, um, we can have any character here, uh, any space uh, combined, and it's all still going to be considered at a single chunk of text. So to examine what is the length of our text here, we need to go to the text box, right? And from there, we want to uh, essentially find what is written in our text box. So we want text box, not the font size, right, but the text itself. So we select uh, from the drop-down menu. And when we click this button, the text label is going to be set to the length of our text box text, right? So let's check when we click it we getting the result that we have 18 characters here. We can count them and check that. Uh, pay attention that the space is a character too, right? So if we count them, we'll check. Okay, it is correct. We have 18 spaces. What else we can do? Let's say 
we can check if it's empty, right? We, we don't, that's simple. We can compare two texts. Uh, we can trim, which means any uh, space in the beginning or at the end of our uh, uh, text chunk would be trimmed. So we, we won't, we cannot possibly have after this operation space at the front uh, or at the back. Uppercase or lowercase, down case here, uh, is going to simply change um, uh, up everything, all the characters to uppercase or to lowercase, which uh, is not that interesting. We're not going to spend time on that one. Uh, this one is interesting. So this one is going to examine at which position uh, in our text we're going to have a certain character and it's going to report that back to us. So let's do the following thing. Let's uh, leave all these commands that we already have. I'm just going to add to them. So next one here is going to be start text of our text box text here. And we need to say which character we're searching for. So for that, we need this constant right here. And we need to say, OK, which character we're going to be looking. So let's say we're looking for the capital A. So what is this going to do? I'm just going to delete this since we don't need this one. So let's first uh, comment quickly on this one. When the uh, button is clicked, right, this event handler is going to start the execution of the commands from the top to the bottom. Since I left this initial one, it's going to run this one first, and then it's going to run the second one. But since everything is going to happen, be happening so fast, we don't really see the execution of the first one. We're just going to see the result of the last one. That's why I'm leaving everything as we move along. So the second one was going to do the following. It's going to search through this text and find at which position is the capital A. Right. So we execute it, click on the button, and it tells us that the A is at the fifth position. It gives us the index of this letter A in this text, which is very useful if we want to find something and, and get the index at which position it is. OK, let's see what's next one. So let's keep everything we have. We're just going to move to the next one. So we don't need this, right? But we're going to be looking at, say, contains. So this is uh, actually uh, logic. Uh, we're going to get the, the logic response to this, because the question is, does this text contains certain character or, or a group of characters? And uh, the result is going to be true or false, right? So let's see, does it contain a capital I, right? So what is going to tell us is true, right? Because we it does contain a capital I. But let's check. Click on the text, and it says, yes, it does contain capital I. Now, since this is the... Uh, this is the logic response. We can also use uh, logic say not, which is you should know what sh what is going to do s this going to do. This is going to say not whatever is this result. So not true. It's going to give us false now. So let's click the button, and it says false. Right. Let's see what else we can do. Uh, we can split right here. So we can split text. Uh, let's copy this again. Bring it here. We're not going to use this one. We want to split this text. And where do we want to split this text? So let's say this is going to be a little bit more interesting. Let's say we want to split it at uh, letter N. Now note that we have more than one N, right? So let's see what happens. Uh, as, as I mentioned before, all of these commands are going to be sequentially executed, but we just see the result of the last one because everything happens so fast. So let's click at the button text. And here it is. 
since there is there are two ends, it's going to split this text. First part is before the first end. The second part is in between these two ends, and the last part is past uh, uh, the letter N. Uh, what is this result? You see these brackets. These brackets mark that this is essentially a list. We have a list now with the three items, one, two, and three. And we can further handle this using the lists, but we didn't go there so far, so we won't start now. Just in principle, that you know, we can now further extract any of these by using the list. Why is this split so important for us? Because sometimes if we have a long string, and uh, important information may be separated by a comma or may be separated by a certain character, we can essentially split this long text at these characters that we know and extract specific lines of information that were all initially patched together. So this is why we need this quite a bit. Uh, similar to this, uh, is splitted spaces. So if we use splitted spaces, which is very direct, right? So you cannot choose at which character we're going to be splitting. In this case, we're going to split right at spaces. Then clearly what we're going to get in this case is we can uh, see that it's going to split at these spaces. So we're going to get MIT. We're going to get app, inventor, and two. So we're going to get four items in the list, right? Let's check. If we click on the text, right here are four items in the list. And um, let's see what else. We can segment text, right? So we can segment. This one is sort of self-explanatory, but uh, let's... Uh, quickly do this because this one is also very useful. So we need to say at which index we're going to start and uh, what is the length that we want to uh, segment. For that we're going to need a uh, constant right in math. So let's say we're going to gonna copy this one so let's say what do we do if we start at 5 and we say that the length is 3 what we're gonna extract here is gonna be exactly this app because it starts at 5 and it has a length 3 so if we click here right we extracted the app let's see what else um, replace let's let's do this one too so replace but let's see again the name says it all but since it's uh, pretty useful let's do that one too so we want to go into our text here we want to find a certain segment and then we want to replace it with something else so we're going to need a constant text which is here and we're going to need another one and we don't need this so let's delete this one so let's say we want to replace the MIT and let's say we replace MIT with Georgia Tech so what happens we search for MIT and then we replace it with the Georgia Tech. When we click the uh, text box, the result is going to be Georgia Tech App Inventor 2, right? And uh, I think this pretty much concludes what was interesting here to show. Uh, is a string is essentially uh, another logic uh, question. You're going to get the logic response to that. Reverse is going to just reverse uh, our text. And uh, this mapping uh, requires some dictionary, so on. So this is really not in, in, into the basic operations that we're dealing with here now. So we can, uh, we can complete our uh, lesson five right here. Uh, and uh, uh, the next uh, step is going to be lesson number six.
until then.